Hey, welcome to Jimmy D's RC and thanks for stopping by. Been crook a little while, I uh, had the, uh, the flu for the last five days. I am absolutely cracking to get into this one. Just received this and as you can see, it's a gray box or a normal colored box with blue tape. So it says Motion RC on it, free wing on it. Hmm, I wonder what could be inside. Let's find out. As with all things Motion RC and Free Wing, very well packed inside with styrofoam. They uh, really take care of the space efficiency and their bit in their model, don't they? Very little extra bits, very little extra cardboard. Ah, you can already see that's the P15. The Lippish P15 Diana, sport scale EDF jet. The plan is to uh, put a rudder mod on this one and uh, uh, pan and tilt FPV rig. And this is going to be the airplane that I use uh, for formation flying and chase flying. So should be a bit more of a stable platform than the drone uh, because uh, you know there won't be so much uh, correcting going on you'd expect. We'll see though, we'll see what happens. All right, so what do we get in the box? We get the manual. All right, looks like a carbon spar. Get out of the way. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, these are extra bits that I ordered. Yeah, okay, I've ordered those for a different project. I'm just gonna put those aside. Good show. They came from the same shop, so they clearly opened up the box and popped those in there. And there is the fuse. So it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Nice and solid. That, I'm gonna have to cut the canopy off because I'm gonna um, do a whole bunch with that FPV rig that goes in there. Actually, it doesn't seem as easy. Okay, there we go. To get into our central area. But as you can see, it's not, as, not necessarily large in there and not a lot of room. It's very, very, very thick because of course we've got these EDF inlets on each side that bring this whole battery compartment down to a very tight taper. So there's not a lot of room for extra hardware in there unless we go forward into the nose, nose cone. Uh, and there is no actual nose cone. That's all, that's all um, styrofoam up there. It's a lot shorter than I thought it was. Look, I mean, Right, as, as wide as my shoulders are, that's as long as that thing is. Pretty short. Really nice finish, as with all free wing stuff, so. But that's definitely gonna, I'm gonna use it as a belly lander, so I'm gonna need to put some tape in there to reinforce it up a bit. I wonder, I wonder if I can even fit, fit a pen and tilt rig in there. I'm, maybe I can't, maybe I'm just gonna go with the camera. A forward-facing camera oh, it makes formation a little rough um, you'd like to be able to tilt your head to one side or the other maybe I can just put a instead of a pan and tilt just a pan rig in there okay so here what do we have here it looks like I've got my vertical fin all right and the rudder now the rudder of course it doesn't come built to um, to have a rudder it's got it there I mean it's got the panel lines for it but it's, uh, it really is only a flying wing with the, the two channels for the elevons, right? So elevons are ailerons that also act like elevators. Um, that's how all your flying wings work. Looks like I have my other carbon uh, rod there. That's just for a pitot tube. They just want that up on the, the uh, starboard wing. You glue that in if you want scale pitot tube. So I'll put that aside because, again, this is not a scale... Oh, they've given me a clevis in here as well. Just one though, that's strange. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's not as if um, I'm gonna be using this as a scale model, it's more, it's more a chase plane. That's really all it is. So, just for a little bit of fun when uh, we've got other warbirds up in the air. I don't think you're gonna see much footage of this 
uh, from the outside, it's all going to be from the inside. There we go. Got our port wing, very easy. And our starboard wing, I already took out. We'll put this aside. Really inexpensive kit lately. Um, they must have a lot of supply. So uh, we get a lot of good reviews on it too. And people say it's very stable. We'll see how she goes in the landing. Okay, there's the starboard wing. Okay, and of course they're just gonna plug in thusly. Boom, boom, but I won't build it yet because I'm gonna wanna figure out that vertical fin before I get it built. Because what I wanna do is throw a nine gram servo. If I could throw it in the fin, that would be the best thing. And then I don't know where I'd, I'd run the, um, the cable. It would be tough. I can't run it in where the EDF unit is. I'm going to have to go past the EDF unit and, and then go into the, the center. Yeah. And it's too bad because it's already all built and put together. Oh, it looks like I can access the, ED, the EDF fan here. I got a couple of screws. Let's, uh, let's unscrew that now and see what happens if we do that. Okay, so I've set up uh, one of my action cameras here, so hopefully we can kind of edit that into the video so you can get a close-up view of the work. So we'll just unscrew the old uh, screws here that enclose the EDF unit. Some of those come apart pretty easy. Um, feels like they're, yeah, that's just ply by the feel of it. I don't know if you can catch that one, so you know, we'll bring it around. Catch all that. You get to see up close and personal how nasty and dirty my work table is. Maybe it's time for a new tablecloth. It's just an old sheet, really. Whatever, uh, whatever works, right? All right, looks like that's come out quite easily. There we go. You can see the EDF housing. Okay, that's glued in there, so that's not going to come out easily. Um, let's have a, a feel here. So about this far up, the EDF unit ends about there. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'm going to want to rip the old EDF out a bit. If I can pull that out, right, then I can run probably as far back as here, the trailing edge of the wing. And the trailing edge of the wing is the leading edge of the vertical fin. Then I can uh, put in my servo and run my cable, even if I can run it underneath where the fin goes. I can dig out a little recess there that goes straight out, and then I can run my cable. There's a channel that's above the EDF unit. See? And that channel goes all the way to the ESC, and the ESC is right there. I don't know if you can catch that. The ESC is right there. So uh, that would be the ideal way to run that, that servo cable for the rudder. Because I have seen guys do this where they actually kick out, they put the servo um, even in, in like right in that recess there or maybe just on the other side and then they, they kick out a freaking control cable, like a control wire here that goes out and up to the servo. But it was a pretty rough looking model. He had been using it quite a while. So I think that's going to be the solution for this one. Anyway, there it is. That's the uh, the unboxing and the plan for the work that needs to get done. Uh, the servo, just to give you an idea, um, should be just about the right size to fit in there. I mean, there's a nine gram servo there, and they're not that thick. They're they're probably when you shave them down, they're going to be a little more narrow than the vertical fin. So uh, I can I can butt it one side up against the outside of the vertical fin, and even if I have a little hump on the the other side, that's not a big deal. I'll paint it gray, and away we go. Anyway, so there it is. That's the plan. Uh, we'll do a video of the work and uh, hopefully it turns out all right. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate the help growing my channel. All the best. Catch you next time.